you don't know what you don't know, you know? <laughs> and there's no way you would ever know those things unless someone told you those things because you're deceived. There's no way you could see the forest through the trees. And today we have someone who can see the forest through the trees because he's been there. Jake Hilton, welcome back to Shabbat Night Live. For the past five weeks, we have been going over the details of why Mormonism is a dangerous, in your words, yep. faith to get involved in. Uh, because mm. you were there, yep. you came out of it, you know why you came out of it, Yehovah led you out of it, and yeah. now you're helping others to understand what it is. Now, in this episode, we're going to have a brief overview of those uh, things we talked about in the last five episodes. Right. So if someone wants to give this episode to a friend uh, who, is, who is questioning Mormonism and whether they should be in it or not, we want to be able to help them understand the inner workings of what's going on. Right. And then what to do about it. So without further ado, I wanna hand it over to you because you're the man who's been there and you're the one that came out of it. Appreciate that, thank you for having me, Scott. Yes, as we've been looking at uh, just a few specific examples of why Mormonism is so dangerous, and these are really, we just looked at a few. I think of you know Martin Luther, uh, what was it, 1517, where he has his 95 theses and he nails it to the church door. These are 95 problems he could identify with Catholicism. What we have seen in this series is two specific examples of why Mormonism is dangerous and why Joseph Smith is a false prophet and blasphemer. But through all the years of study and research that I have done into the Bible, the Torah, as well as Mormonism, and the three decades I spent living that religion, I've actually identified over 160 false doctrines or false traditions in this religion, things that are incompatible with the Bible. So let's get into this. First with the review. We looked at Isaiah chapter 11, first with its true interpretation about that branch of righteousness that comes out of the root system of that stump. And we know that that branch of righteousness is Jesus Christ. It's Yeshua Messiah. However, Joseph Smith, founder of Mormonism, he comes in and he says, no, the stump, that dead, rotting, decaying stump, that's Jesus and the branch of righteousness, that's me. And we read this disgusting quote from uh, church leader Bruce R. McConkie saying, if it had not been for Joseph Smith and the restoration, there would be no salvation. There is no salvation outside the Church of Jesus Christ of Latter-day Saints. These are lies, and more than just lies, it's straight up blasphemy. We looked at that uh, episodes two and three of this teaching series. Then we got to episodes uh, four and five, where we dove down deep into the ugliness of what's called the Book of Abraham, one of the uh, scriptural books of Mormonism. We looked at Joseph Smith's interpretation of facsimile one, seeing that it's completely false. We looked at his interpretation of facsimile three, also seeing it's completely false, and we spent a great deal of time looking at his interpretation of facsimile two, and one particular aspect of facsimile two Figure seven, located right there in the red circle. These were the Egyptian, pagan, disgusting deities known as Min and Nehebka that Joseph Smith says, this represents God sitting upon his throne, revealing through the heavens the grand key words of the priesthood, as also the sign of the Holy Ghost unto Abraham in the form of a dove. When really, this is just the Egyptian male sex and fertility God, God of promiscuous life and idol like just the most horrific, you know, type of sexuality imaginable. And then Nehebka, who Joseph Smith says is represented, this is the Holy Ghost, that's a legged serpent. That is a snake right there. Not only is this false, but it is complete double blasphemy against God and his Holy Spirit. So with all of that, that quick review, <laughs> we've just seen those two examples of how the founder of Mormonism, total false prophet, blasphemer, just two, there's over 160 of them that I could spend literally months, if not years, you know, covering. This is the problem. This is the problem that we are facing 
And it's certainly the problem that every single member of the LDS church, man, woman, child, cradle to the grave, it's the problem that they're all facing. The problem is that the foundation of this whole religion is nothing but lies. Now, I think back to uh, the subjects that we were covering at the very beginning of the series, how we were talking about Satan, the dragon, and how what he does is he takes his lies and he just twists it, mingles it, spirals it with the truth of God. And at the beginning, he spirals just a little bit of his lies, just a tiny bit. But if he can get people to believe just in those little tiny lies, he's got them. If they won't wake up, if they won't have their eyes and, and their ears open to see and hear the truth of God, he can just lead them carefully, step by tiny step, into that deep, dark tunnel. So the, the, what is white and light versus the black and false, Right. there's an element of gray that starts. Yeah. And it just gets darker and darker and darker. And, you know, one could, you know, turn, and this is uh, something that I have encountered myself from many dozens of Mormons, is one of their primary objections is, but, but there's so much truth, as they understand truth, in the Book of Mormon. There's so much truth in the Book of Mormon. How could it possibly be from a false prophet? But you have to remember that principle of what Satan does. He just starts weaving some of his lies with the truth. Satan knows what the Bible says, right? We know that. He quotes it in one of the three temptations to Yeshua Messiah. I think of that he very quotes thing. the Psalms. Yep. But mm -hmm. when you go to the actual psalm he's quoting, you see that Satan is twisting it, completely twisting and Out perverting context. its context. Mm -hmm. Takes a little cherry pick here, a little snippet there, completely perverts it. And for anybody that would be foolish enough to believe those lies and those cherry pickings of the word of God, he's got gotcha. you. And that's really what the Book of Mormon is. It's what Mormonism is in general. Lies mixed with some truth that as more time has gone on in Mormonism and to the end of Joseph Smith's life in 1844, it just got darker and darker and darker, deeper and deeper into lies, ever darkening lies. And you've seen some of these, like Isaiah 11 and the Book of Abraham, not just lies, but disgusting, pitch black lies. And now we come to the most important question in this series. Well, okay, what to do about it? One might be scratching their heads here and going, okay, well, what could I do to help solve this problem? There's a lot of people in this world that they focus on problems. And when you focus on problems, focus on the darkness, you got to be really careful about doing that. It won't be long before you see a lot of that darkness in your own life. We have to focus on God's word. We have to focus on the solution to the problem. And that's what I seek to do with the Sword of Yehovah Ministries. Provide a solution to this problem of this dangerous religion, Mormonism. And it really gets back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the series, the why. What's the why for what I do? What is the driving motive? And it gets back to the saying, out of the frying pan and into the fire. Statistically speaking, most people that leave Mormonism, whatever their reason may be, and it's usually that they come across uh, online, church history type of stuff, like Book of Abraham type of stuff is a big one. They come across this kind of information online. They have their whole foundation, their complete faith, totally shattered. And because they've never at any time been taught to build their lives on the Bible, it all goes out the window. They end up being atheists or agnostic. I try to prevent that if I can. <laughs> as much as God will em empower me by his grace, I desire to prevent that. There's a lot of Mormons that do just this. They get out of the frying pan of Mormonism, but they go right into the fires of atheism. I want to help these individuals, guide these individuals out of that frying pan of Mormonism and right into the cool, refreshing, living waters of truth as provided by Yehovah, His Son Yeshua, the Holy Bible, Torah, getting into relationship with God, seeking to be those true worshipers of the Father that worship the Father in spirit and truth, as Yeshua says in John chapter 4. The solution to the problem for this particular audience, 
may seem like a total duh. And it is a duh for this audience. But to the audience of Mormons, it's to them, it's not a duh. To them, it's, is that really the solution? We turn to the Holy Bible. God's word is the solution to the problem. Truth is what cuts through the darkness of lies. I think about what Paul says in Ephesians chapter 6, verse 17. We need to take the sword of the Spirit, which is the word of God. And that, that verse is one of the theme verses of this ministry that you know, God inspired me to establish back in November of 16, the sword of Yehovah. The sword of Yehovah is the word of Yehovah. And that word, we got two forms of it, written, recorded form, the Holy Bible, living form, Yeshua the Messiah, the living Torah, the living word, the word that became flesh and tabernacled among us. The solution is to provide this particular audience, Mormons, with the truth of God's word. The truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth. Get them built on that foundation. Because it needs to be pointed out, as you'll see in these next quotes, that's not the foundation that Mormons are built on. They, they ignore the Bible. They truly do ignore it. We have another one of these apostles of the LDS Church. This individual's name is M. Russell Ballard. And in 2015, just seven years ago, he said... We don't have to question anything in the church. Don't get off into that. Just stay in the Book of Mormon. Just stay in the Doctrine and Covenants. Just listen to the prophets. Just listen to the apostles. We won't lead you astray. We cannot lead you astray. Now, Scott, do you see a problem <laughs> with that quote there? Yeah, it's, it's, if you're not... That sounds like totalitarianism, some kind of <laughs> overlording saying, don't, don't you dare look anywhere else. That, oh. That's the hallmark of a cult leader. Mm -hmm. That is absolutely the hallmark of a cult leader. Focus on this, as bold, in bold and underlined here. He mentions, first, don't get off into questioning anything about the church. Don't question it at all. But then he focuses on Book of Mormon, Doctrine and Covenants, and then Prophets and Apostles, but that's them. He's not referring to the prophets of the Old Testament. Oh, good grief, no. Yeah. He's not referring to the apostles of the first century. No, no, no. The Bible at all is not mentioned in that quote Come to now that you look at it. Oh, that's exactly the point. What he says is don't question anything in the church. Just stay with the Book of Mormon. Just stay with Doctrine and Covenants. And just stay with us. Because, quote, we won't lead you astray. We cannot lead you astray. And that's another one of these founding doctrines of Mormonism is that its leadership will never, ever lead the membership astray. That From, as long as you believe them and follow them, you are golden right into heaven. Lead you astray from Mormonism. <laughs> Not the truth, but from Mormonism. Oh, yeah, exactly. They, they will never lead you astray from Mormonism. I say that's, mm -hmm. a, that's a correct... <laughs> you know, that's really what they're talking about. So... Getting back to the quote from Ballard here, my question is, where's the Bible? <laughs> As you, you pointed Gosh. out, Scott, you're like, well, he doesn't even mention the Bible there. I never realized it until you, <laughs> I tell, oh, wait a minute, you're right. There's like, there's, there's the this and this and this, but where's the Bible? Where's the Bible? You're right. They don't focus on it. And the reason why they don't focus on it is because the Bible, God's true word, it does not equate to Joseph Smith or to Mormonism. These two things are completely incompatible one with another. It is like a square peg and a round hole. They will never fit. Now, Mormonism, they certainly try to make the Bible fit, but the only way they can actually make it fit is by cutting off this part of that square peg, mm. cutting off this part, breaking off this part, getting rid of this, getting rid of it, and we're gonna force it to fit down this round hole that, that is Mormonism that Joseph Smith created. Mm. The Bible and Mormonism are completely incompatible. And it's for, it is for that reason that its leadership, as you saw from that quote, they don't focus on the Bible. 
They give the Bible lip service. Oh yes, we believe the Bible is the word of God, but they don't focus on it. They certainly don't do deep study and deep research into it because there's so many contrary doctrines. The Bible says one thing, Mormonism says another. And so getting back to the solution to the Mormonism problem, it's really just the truth. The foundation of Mormonism are all of those lies of the enemy. Yes, which have been mingled with some truth of God in order to deceive, but it's that sword of Yehovah, it's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God, that needs to be presented in its perfection, beauty, and clarity to this audience, to the Mormon audience. And if it's presented to them in its clarity and beauty, it has been my experience that for anybody who is a part of that second group that we talked about way back at the beginning, episode one in the disclaimer, uh, second group being questioning Mormons, those Mormons that are already starting to see some of the problems. It has been my experience that if they're a part of that group and if they're spiritually and intellectually honest, they always will reject the Mormonism and they will embrace the truth of God's word. Mm. It, it's, it's been over these last several years since the founding of the Sword of Yehovah Ministries in November of 16, it has been one of the... Uh, greatest honors of my life, if not the greatest honor, I would say, to uh, be used in this way by the Almighty. I'm just, I, I praise God every single day that he, he's called me to this work. And I hope that he will continue to call me into you know, this work, ever more in this work, to reach this particular audience and reach more and more of them. It's my hope to ultimately reach tens of thousands. So of we moments. just have a couple of minutes left in this first half. I want to ask you something. Yes. So if someone is watching this and they're one of those folks who is grew up in Mormonism and is in question and is questioning it, right? What is the most common question you get from someone in that group that this person might go, "That's the question in my head." Oh, that's a tough one. Or one of the one of the most common ones. A lot of the most common questions are in regards to specific events in church history. Mm. Things like, say, the Book of Abraham or the extreme racism in Mormon church history. I don't encounter too many people that have specific questions regarding doctrines. Most of these people, they, they're exposed to information online regarding church history things, which these are factual church history things. They did occur. But unfortunately, most of the people who have uh, documentaries out there or websites dedicated to exposing Mormonism, these websites don't focus on doctrines. Because a lot of the people who create these websites are ex-Mormons who are now atheists. Oh, I see. And their intention is just, let's just focus on the problems of church yeah, history, yeah. and unfortunately, they're highly successful at bringing people out of Mormonism and into those fires of atheism. When it comes to the Sword of Yehovah Ministries, I, I just want to be used by God to prevent that from happening. Most, they throw everything out, and I'm just saying, you don't need to do that. There is a book that is worthy of your trust. There is a book that is trustworthy, a book that's true. The word of God as contained in the Holy Bible is flawless, it's beautiful. The Torah is perfect as David says in Psalm 19. Mm. It is worth building your life on. It is that rock solid foundation that if you will trust it and build your life on it, not only will you have a wonderful relationship with its author, Yehovah the Almighty, but if you believe and follow his son, Yeshua, you will have life and life everlasting. That's what I want to do. That's the solution to the problem that I want to present to Mormons. And uh, after the break, mm -hmm. I think that we can uh, talk about a specific project that I'm currently working on okay. to do just that and Beautiful. perhaps how your own audience can help with that project. Beautiful, okay, thank you. All right, we'll be right back with more with uh, 
with Jake, Jake Hilton. Thank you very much for being here. Thank and uh, we thank you for supporting this ministry. And uh, we we know that we can count on you. So thank you very much. And uh, stay tuned. In just a couple of minutes, we're going to hear how maybe you can help out Jake as well. Jehovah wants us to be the head and not the tail. So that means being the leaders in this world. It means doing stuff for other folks and leading folks into things and being able to be that light that shows the way for other folks. And uh, Jake, you are doing that through a project that you're starting, and we'll talk about that in just a second. But uh, you know, that, that's what we want to do. We want to be the head and not the tail. Uh, and, and so when Yehovah has given us a mantle, as it were, or, or, or a message, and mm -hmm. the ability to tell that to other folks, you know, those of us who receive that take that very seriously. I, I've received that for as far as people's health, and I'm doing all I can, and you're doing something to help folks get out of Mormonism in that same kind of uh, spirit. Absolutely. Uh, we are called to be that city that's set on a hill that mm -hmm. cannot be hid. And whatever lights, you know, you know, God has provided us, us with, we never put it under that bushel, under that basket. But we, we hold it up, we place it on that menorah, and we let it shine to the whole house and everyone in that house. And the, quote, house that I was born and raised in was the house of Mormonism. And the reality is that while Mormonism exalts that particular house as a house of light and truth and uh, the one and only true church on the face of the whole earth, the reality is there's a tremendous amount of darkness in that house. And if Yehovah, blessed be his name, can use me as an instrument to lift a menorah of light in that house of darkness and shine some light for those in that darkness that are starting to recognize the truth, starting to see the problems, well then hallelujah, praise be to God. So we were talking about the solution to the problem of Mormonism. It really, it's the truth of Yehovah's word. It's the sword of the spirit, which is the word of God. And it's our Lord Yeshua who says in John 8 that if you abide in my word, if you are continuing in the word of truth, the word of God, well then truly you are my disciples. Then you will know the truth and the truth does what? It sets us free. That really is the motive when it comes to the sword of Yehovah ministries. If God, in some small way, can use me as he directs by his will to provide his truth, it's not me, it has nothing to do with me. It's his word, it's his truth, it's his son, Yeshua. Salvation belongs to Yehovah God. It's, I, I'm just, I'm just an instrument in his hands. That's all it is. And if he can use me in some small way to you know, help others and guide others into relationship with God and his son Yeshua, then once again, hallelujah. The project that I'm currently working on is entitled My Mormon Exodus. And really that's, that's what my journey has been. It's been an exodus out of Mormonism. And it, it, I gotta tell you, when you're born and raised in a religion like Mormonism, it takes years of time to clean the slate and identify, expose all the lies, worthlessness, and unprofitable things and get them out of your lives. You come out of a religion like that, and even if you're coming to the truth of the Holy Bible and the truth of Torah, you have to dedicate a significant amount of time, effort, energy, and work into studying God's word and relying on his grace and his spirit and power to, to help you identify, okay, this is what I was born and raised with, this is what the Bible says, okay, that's one thing, throw it out. Identify the lies and replace it with the truth. And so, the My Mormon Exodus series, and this can all be seen on my YouTube channel, youtube.com forward slash YHVH sword, it's, imagine a, a giant umbrella, if you will, and beneath this umbrella of My Mormon Exodus are three documentary series, docu-series. And the first one is entitled The Only True God. And with The Only True God docu-series, what we're doing with the audience of Mormons is seeking to clean the slate. We're gonna clean the slate and get back to the very, very beginning, the absolute principles about who is God? Let's actually talk about 
the supreme being. Let's talk about our maker, our creator, that king of all creation. Who is he? What's his name? What does his name mean? And who is his son, Yeshua, Jesus? Really, this only true God, it's, it's just about building that absolute foundation of all foundations of this is what you as a Mormon have been taught to believe about God and about Jesus. Let's put that aside and let's actually look at what the Bible says about God and about Jesus. And so we have the first of these three documentaries of the My Mormon Exodus series, The Only True God. The second of these three docu-series is entitled The Torah Fulfilled. And this one is uh, just building upon that first foundation. It's building uh, you know, up, and obviously it's all about the Torah, yes, but it's in this documentary that we're providing evidence that the Bible itself is worthy of your trust because Mormons don't know that. Mormons don't know if they can trust the Bible because they've literally been taught not to trust the Bible. Mm. So the Bible might say something, but a Mormon will go, yeah, but it is the Bible after all. And we know that the Bible has been skewed and twisted and all sorts of problems and we can't trust it. So when it comes to the second documentary, we're gonna go, okay, this is what you've been taught about the Bible. Let's see if that's accurate. And so we go through and we provide a tremendous amount of evidences to show to this audience it is trustworthy. So we look at archeological evidences, we look at scientific evidences, prophetic evidence, we look at evidence for uh, the resurrection itself of our Lord Yeshua Messiah, on and on and on. So many evidences to say, not only is this true and accurate, but it's perfectly true and accurate. You've mm. been taught that the Bible is this cracked and broken foundation that really you should put aside and you should instead build on the Book of Mormon and Joseph Smith and church leadership. But what we're showing you now is, no, that's not true. The truth is, not only is it a solid foundation, it is the only foundation that you should be building yourself upon. So what do you do with that versus, so someone says, well, I have the Bible, I have the Joseph Smith translation. Mm. So how do you reconcile, well, here's all these other ones that have all this proof, and here's this bone on its own, this Joseph Smith translation with no record of... Well, that's one of the things of the that is covered is you know, the reality that uh, 40,000 plus manuscripts of the Bible have been found, either full manuscripts or fragments of manuscripts, even dating you know, hundreds of years before Christ, See, Mormons don't know that. They think that there's some manuscript floating out there somewhere that agrees with the JST or the Joseph Smith, quote, inspired Bible. We show that and it's like, there's not a single manuscript on planet earth that agrees with this. So we, we talk about that, we build that foundation on the Bible, but we go further in the second docu-series, specifically about the Torah itself. And we build that foundation on the Torah. So we go into things like the Sabbath day, we go into the feasts and festivals, how Yeshua literally to the very day and hour is fulfilling the spring feasts of Yehovah when he came the first time. And we'll look at how the fall feasts of Yehovah, trumpets, uh, atonement, and tabernacles are prophetic shadow pictures of his second coming and how he will also fulfill all of those. We'll also talk about what does this word fulfill even mean? Because Mormons believe it means to abolish it, to throw it out. In mm. fact, the Book of Mormon itself specifically teaches that. That when Jesus says he fulfilled the law of Moses, that was he did away with it. And mm. he brings in this, this new law, these new commandments. When people say fulfill, I mean, there's, there's often that argument in the Christian church as well. Mm. where you know, that means abolish. But right. I tell people, well, let's, let's take baseball for an example. <laughs> let's say a pitcher has a perfect game. That... Therefore, he has fulfilled the perfect game. He yep. has accomplished his goal. Does that mean that he stops playing baseball? No. No. Does that, and, and all other pitchers are aspiring to be like that pitcher. <laughs> they, want to, they want to be like him. Right. Does that mean if they reach that pinnacle that they stop playing baseball? No. Or that the entire sport is done away with? Or the whole sport? No. You keep, <laughs> Throughout the whole sport. <laughs> you keep aspiring to be like that first pitcher right. who did the perfect game. Exactly. 
So all of these things are going to be in that second docu-series, The Torah Fulfilled. We build the first foundation about who's God and who is his son, Yeshua. Second foundation on top of that, let's build what's the Bible, what's the Torah, and what does this whole Jesus fulfills the Torah imagery, what's that all about? We just mm. go as deep as possible into that, even to uh, things like what Michael Rood has presented in the Jonah Code. Mm. Three days, three nights in the heart of the earth, we go into all of that in the second docuseries, The Torah Fulfilled. And with those first two documentaries now completed, and those foundations have been properly laid for a Mormon, then we can get into the third and final documentary of the My Mormon Exodus series, which is entitled Why I Left Mormonism. Now you, Scott, as we've been having uh, this whole series of you know, teachings on this particular subject, you have your background in uh, the Pentecostal church, mm -hmm. Christian religion. Yeah, there's problems, but you still believed in the Bible growing up. Sure. Yeah. You come out of that, you have now a uh, understanding and a belief and background in the Torah. So much of what we've covered, you see the problem immediately. You're just like, okay, that's a problem. All of that's a problem. But the reason why you see it so clearly and so immediately is because you already have those first foundations. You know who God is. You know who Yeshua is. You know what the Bible says. You know it's true. You know what the Torah is. You know it hasn't been abolished or thrown out. You know that that's what Jesus says. Don't even let it cross your minds that I came to destroy the law of the prophets. I haven't come to destroy them, but to fulfill them, to live them, to, to live, you know, to play that perfect game, right? Mm -hmm. you, you understand all of that. And so when it comes to any subject, you no, know, on top of that, say the subject of Mormonism, you recognize the problem immediately. And for any Mormon that watches those first two docu-series, and now they come to the third docu-series, Why I Left Mormonism, a docu-series where we do look at the specific problems of Mormonism, and yes, not just two of those problems, but all 160 plus of them, mm. this is somebody that's gonna go, oh, I now can clearly see that I've been lied to. I've mm. been duped. Just as the woman said to Yehovah from the Garden of Eden, the serpent deceived me. The serpent deceived me. And that's, that's what Mormonism is, led by the serpent himself. Now, how did you feel? Because people are going to watch this and go, wait a minute, if I find that out, I'm, I'm going to be mad. I mean, like, that's how I felt when I first discovered this. It's like everything I've been mm. taught is wrong, not right. everything, but all the things, you know. So how did you feel when you first came out of that? There, there is a process, and I, I believe it's a, it's a natural, perhaps even necessary process of healing when you come out of a religion like Mormonism. And that process, there's, there's gonna be some resentment. There's gonna be some bitterness. There's gonna be even a little bit of anger. If you've spent 30, 40, 50 years of your life believing that this is not just any church, but it is the one and only true church, believing that Joseph Smith is not just any prophet, but he is like the greatest prophet ever, second only to Jesus himself, you have that entire worldview and paradigm shattered. It is, you're gonna be hurt by that. There's a reason why the, the word of Yehovah is described as a sword. A sword cuts, and it can cut deep. But the way that I look at that particular sword is much like a, a scalpel in the hands of the great physician. And when it comes to Mormons, there are some problems and gangrene and all sorts of issues on their body. And the great physician comes in with his scalpel and says, look, we can't just leave all these problems on your body. Because if we just leave it, it will fester and grow and it can get into your bloodstream and go right to your heart and it can kill you. Allow me to use this scalpel to cut those things out. Now, the process of cutting it out is gonna be a painful one, but I promise you the end result is infinitely better than what you're currently going through. And so that's how I like to approach that. 
people, yeah, there's going to be some anger. There's going to be some bitterness. It's just a natural part of cutting the gangrene out mm. and getting to a healthy, spiritually in tune, one with Yehovah and one with Yeshua body. So third and final documentary of the YLF Mormonism series, excuse me, of the My Mormon Exodus series entitled YLF Mormonism. With these three docu-series of the My Mormon Exodus umbrella, if you will, now complete, anyone that will view this, that has that Mormon background, they will come to see and know the beautiful light that is contained in that book that sits on pretty much all of their bookshelves, but unfortunately collects a whole bunch of dust. They, mm. they don't take it off their bookshelves. They don't read it. They don't, certainly don't understand it. They don't love it. But they will come to see, not only is this book true, the Holy Bible, not only is it God's word, but there's so much light in it. And it can provide me with light to lead my way, to guide my path, exactly as King David describes God's word, that the word of Yehovah, it is a lamp to my feet and it's a light to my path. And for anyone that will follow that path of light, trust in its source, Yehovah, every single chain can be broken and there can be liberty, there can be freedom in Yehovah so that they can be brought into relationship and just shout hallelujah. Mm -hmm. That's what I desire. And uh, anyone willing to help with this project, I would you know, encourage all to go to uh, the YouTube page. Once again, youtube.com forward slash YHVH sword. Mm -hmm. And there are multiple ways that uh, the ministry can be supported in this specific project. Uh, you can pretty much view any one of the teachings and in the video descriptions, there are ways that the ministry can be supported. All of it is going towards this specific project to help with this, to reach this audience. And I tell you, one of my, my main goals uh, is a, we'll call it an advertising campaign. <laughs> and the United States interstate that goes right through the state of Utah is Interstate 15. Millions of people drive this road, the majority of which are Mormon. And I would love to uh, raise enough you know, funds ultimately to have a full-on billboard campaign right up and down I-15. And it would be the simplest of all campaigns. It would simply say why I left Mormonism, as this image shows, and then just the URL, mymormonexodus.com, which someone sees that who belongs to that second group questioning Mormons, they're gonna go, well, I want to check that out. It catches your eye. It's just why I left mm -hmm. Mormonism. Simple URL to remember. They go to the URL, links to the YouTube channel, ministry channel, as well as to all the docu-series videos. And hopefully it can reach uh, tens of thousands. That's, that's my hope, Yehovah willing. Well, we pray that, that you are successful in that because no one else is doing this to my knowledge. We are certainly not. Not to trying, my knowledge either. Yeah, we're not trying to reach the Mormon church per se and, and show them the truth. Uh, but that's why I'm glad you're here because that is your focus. So I would encourage folks to actually support that because that's important, especially if, if you live in Utah and you, and you want to see right. this. You know, you see what goes on and you see what, what people are missing. It's not what goes on. It's, it's what they're missing in their lives. Right. You know, it's, there's so much more out there with the Torah mm -hmm. that you can see and then have a clear picture picture of the rest of the Bible. So yeah, I would, I would really encourage folks to go to uh, your website. Uh, there it is at the bottom of the screen again, and support this because this is uh, a very unique project uh, <laughs> that I think, I mean, the LDS church is going to be asking some questions of you, I'm sure. Well, but I, I tell you, in all the study research that I've done, I have never once come across a Hebrew roots Torah focused ministry whose founder has that background in Mormonism. Mm -hmm. It just doesn't exist. I truly do believe that the Sword of Yehovah Ministries is the one and only that has that background. And it's like, there, there ha there's a reason for it. I trust in that. Yep. And I believe that God is, his desire for me is to be used by him to reach the specific group. Well, Jake. I just, I 
thank you so much for this opportunity. Oh, Scott. certainly. We're, thank you. We're glad you're here. We love your message. And I know you've got lots on your YouTube uh, page. We could come <laughs> back and have you talk about other things here. Oh, all I kinds would. Of subjects. You can, well, you can bring me back at any time. I would love that. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you again for being here. We really, really appreciate it. And uh, have a safe trip home. And uh, thank you for watching. Uh, we pray that you got something out of this. And uh, hey, if you have Mormon friends who are questioning things, absolutely pass this along. I think they're going to get something out of it. I certainly did. <laughs> Hope you did too. So thank you again for watching, and we'll see you again next time on Shabbat Night Live. Shavuot